what Autodesk NES Trend in CAD is. Uh, first of all, we're just going to do a brief introduction for people who are new to this these webinars. So my name is Niall Smith. I'm a consulting technical or a senior technical consultant with A2K Technologies. My background is in mechanical design, project management, and I cover mainly the simulation products and the data management products from Autodesk for A2K Technologies. The agenda for today's meeting includes a brief introduction about who A2K Technologies are, what we do, and then I will move on to what NAS Training CAD can offer designers. Then I will look into some specific types of analysis that we can do in the software and discuss the other potential analysis types that can be carried out. At the end of the demonstration, I'll leave some time for questions and answers. So if you have a question, please type it into the GoToWebinar control panel that should be on your screen. And I will either answer it straight away if I can, or we'll leave all the questions then until the end of the webinar, if not. Okay. So let's move on to the brief introduction about who A2K Technologies are. To summarize, we are the largest Autodesk partner in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, we consist of a highly experienced team that have worked across various sectors, such as infrastructure, construction, mining, and manufacturing. And I'll keep it short and sweet. And we don't just offer design programs and software. We also offer a full range of solutions that can provide many other services and products that your business may need. So NASTRAN in CAD, let's get on to the main part of the webinar, which is an overview of what NASTRAN in CAD can do. So it's a general purpose finite element analysis tool that's embedded into your CAD system. In May of this year, Autodesk acquired NEI software in order to add additional structural analysis capabilities to the simulation portfolio. So Autodesk Nastran is gives you a lot more functionality than an inventor professional's FEA packages. And it's CAD embedded, so it allows you that kind of back and forth workflow and it's truly associative to your CAD geometry. Interesting point to note as well is that it works with both Autodesk Inventor and SolidWorks. So when we look at the Autodesk mechanical simulation offering, we think of three products. We've got Autodesk NASTRAN, which is recently acquired, and this is an industry recognized FEA solver. So Autodesk NASTRAN on its own would be just like NEI NASTRAN, I guess. Then we've got Autodesk Simulation Mechanical, and we've got Autodesk NASTRAN INCAD, and as I said, Autodesk NASTRAN 2015. The, another interesting thing to note is that Autodesk Simulation Mechanical 2015 R2, which was released a couple of weeks or months ago, now has access to the NASTRAN solvers also. So for certain types of analysis, when you go to run your analysis in Simulation Mechanical, you can decide whether you want to run your simulation using the Algor or the simulation mechanical solvers or the NASTRAN solvers. So more and more they're integrating that capabilities in the simulation mechanical as well. The, at this stage of the simulations of the simulation story, I think most people are aware of why you would want to use FEA in your design process. It can increase profitability through reducing the number of physical prototypes required. It also allows you to iterate through designs quicker, as there is no need to wait for suppliers or manufacturers to build a prototype. So that in turn, because you're doing more virtual testing and getting more confidence in your design, that leads to reduced liability because the quality of your product would will increase. And it also leads to reduced risk of product failure. My personal favorite reason for using simulation is that it always, or it allows you to gain a deeper understanding of how your product works, which allows you how, which allows you then in turn to optimize and innovate your product designs. All of these reasons then in turn lead to increased market share and a more competitive product offering. 
As we mentioned, NAS training CAD is CAD embedded. The benefits of this means that it's easier to use. You've got a familiar workflow and interface to work with. You've got no translation issues going from CAD to FEA. And it means you've got true geometry associativity with your model as well. Oops. So Autodesk NAS training CAD gives you a very comprehensive toolbox of FEA analysis types. You've got your standard linear statics, which is what 80 to 90 percent of people use. Then you've got buckling analysis for things that fail under compressive load. You've got normal modes analysis or modal analysis. You've also got that modal analysis with pre-stresses. Then you move into stuff like heat transfer, so conduction, convection, radiation. And a really interesting component of NAS training CAD is the fact that it will allow you to analyze composite materials. So you can put your ply layouts together and analyze different composite constructions. We'll, of course, there's assembly modeling with contact in there. And we'll see later on how you can model friction and different types of contact. You can also analyze thermal stresses. So you got a little picture of a manifold on the bottom right hand side of the screen. If that was bolted down and it was heating up and cooling down, and we wanted to see the stresses that were induced in the part due to that thermal expansion and contraction, we can analyze exactly how much stresses are in the part. And that gives us an idea of the kind of duty cycle that the part is going through. The more advanced analysis capabilities, so as I said, NAS, Autodesk NASTRAN in CAD gives you a huge amount of analysis capabilities, so it is really high end um, if you want it to be. So you've got nonlinear statics, you've got nonlinear transient heat transfer, you've got nonlinear steady state heat transfer, and what nonlinear heat transfer involves is when the thermal properties of a material are changing in line with the temperature of a part. So maybe the conductivity of it is varying as the temperature increases. That means you can model that accurately. We've also got random response, frequency response, so things like shock loading and vibration response. And then of course we've got transient or time varying loads for linear, nonlinear, and we've got advanced nonlinear hyperelastic materials. What that means is we can model plastics. So I'll show a little demo later on in the web webcast plastics being modeled and how we can accurately define the material behavior of plastics using material models like Mooney Rivlin and so on. Then of course we've got drop test analysis so if you want to see what effect and impact has on your part it's very useful as well. So as I mentioned NASTRAN is a high-end simulation technology. It's been verified with NAFEM's benchmarks. When we get into the demonstration part of the webcast next, I'll show you the type of verification and the accuracy that they have carried out for this NAFEM's benchmarking. The, again, you've got advanced stuff that we mentioned, like nonlinear dynamics and composites and so on. So that will bring us into our demonstration part of this webcast. So let's just switch over to Inventor. And the story here is we want to analyze bracketry. So you can see this bracketry component here. And before I jump into that, what I wanted to do was just mention the verification manual that's available to us. And this was used for NAFEN's benchmarking. So NAFEMS is a worldwide organization. It's not for profit. And it seeks to benchmark all the FEA packages that are on the market. So if you get NAFEMS accreditation, it's really a, a high level of benchmarking. And what you can see is that you have to go through lots and lots of different theoretical um, types of problems. And then you can verify them using theory and then your FEA package. And it gives you the reference so you can see that for the one we're looking at at the moment, it's a reference to Timoshenko, Strength and Materials. You can see the results that are got in theory and the results that are got in NASTRAN INCAD, and you can see the percentage error on the right-hand side as well. So it just gives you an idea of the kind of the thoroughness and the accuracy and the, the quality 
of the FEA package we're working with in Autodesk NAS Tran in CAD. Okay, so what we're going to look at first is a simple part analysis and just give us a feel for what the software is and what it does. When you've got NAS Tran installed, you've got a tab along your ribbon here, or an extra tab, and it's called Autodesk NAS Tran. We can switch into the FEA browser. So with the FEA browser, it's a very similar layout to a lot of FEA packages. You can start at the top and work your way down, or you can start at the left-hand side of the ribbon and work your way across as well. So let's set the model up. We can give a look at perhaps our loads, first of all. we go down to subcase one and put in a new load. And it's loaded up maybe to 30 kilonewtons in a vertical direction here. So we'll say minus 30,000 newtons. Say OK to that. And instead of closing the dialog box, I've got an option here to make a new load or a duplicate of the existing. So I can just say new. Clears my selection and leaves the dialog box open. And let's put in a load in the x direction, perhaps of minus 30,000 newtons again. OK, so we can click OK to that. And next step is we'll put on our constraints. We'll just put a little constraint or a fixed constraint onto the end of the part here. And you can see we've got some standard constraints. We can control our degrees of freedom and all six degrees of freedom here. We've got some nice symmetry and anti-symmetry options, which makes life easy if we want to work with symmetry uh, constraints. And you can see we've got structural and thermal type constraints to work with as well. OK, so let's put in a fixed constraint there. And next step, let's give a look at our mesh. Oh, sorry, our mesh here. So we can specify our element size. Let's make it 5 millimeters. And what else we can do here is, well, we can just say OK for the time being. We don't need to update it. But just to show you the actual controls you've got on your mesh settings as well, you can really get into the fine detail and really refine your mesh as much as you like. So it's telling us, as I would thought it would, that there's no physical properties found in the FEA model. So we can actually define the physical properties here as well. So what the physical properties are, it's telling us that we need to tell us what material to use and what type of elements to use. So when we look at the types of elements that are available to us, we've got solid elements, and we've got some shell elements and line elements. So we really do have a lot of capabilities here. If we want to use shell elements, we model our geometry in surface form inside an inventor, and then we bring it in, and we can apply a shell element. And what's interesting with the shell element is that we've got quadrilateral elements and tetrahedral elements available to us within the shell elements. We've also got line elements. So for this analysis, we're going to run a solid element type. And it's asking us to pick a material type. So we've got two options. We can define the material type here, or we could have imported it from the model, just up on the top of the screen here. And that'll bring in your material from your inventor library. What I want to show you here is the material library that comes with Autodesk Nastran. So with this material library, you can see we've got a lot of more materials available to us and specific grades of steel. So let's make this perhaps an aluminium alloy. And what's also interesting to note is just here, we've got various types of material models. So isotrophic is what's equally strong, the X, Y, Z, whereas orthotrophic is stronger in a particular direction. And you can see we've got brittle material models, some for concrete, foam, viscoelastic, and so on. The other analysis specific data we've got down here is if we want to map in nonlinear materials. So we can map in strain hardening and what happens after yield within a material. We can also map in the fatigue data, and we'll do that later on in this demo. And the last step here is for composites. So we've got all our material characteristics here, and we can put in our allowable stresses and so on. And we can click. OK for that, we'll assign aluminium. And we'll say Add to FE model here. So we'll click OK. 
And you can see in our tree that physical properties have been added. We've got an element size of 5 mil. We can update that and take a look at our mesh. So you can see the we've got a relatively fine mesh and it generates very quickly. We're happy with that. So we've got our materials assigned, our loads put on, our constraints defined. We should be good to run it. So let's click Run and see how it goes. It runs very fast. It shouldn't take longer than 15 to 20-ish seconds. And what's nice is we can see the Astran or the Astran output file. So if we spot any errors, we don't have to wait till the end of the analysis if there's something wrong. We can then um, spare a bit of time and be more efficient. So let's give a look at our results. We can look at things like our displacement. And let's change our visibility op options here to hide all the edges. Give us a bit more of a, a nicer look at our FE model. So let's change it perhaps to our solid von Mises. And you can see we've got all our principal stresses, shear stresses, and so on within our results um, selection. So let's change it to solid von Mises. And we can see exactly where in the model the maximum stresses are occurring, how large they are, and the minimum ones. So we can see we've got quite high stresses down in the corner. Could be resulting from the stress concentration. But let's just say we're, we're OK with the static analysis for the time being. And what we'd like to do next is check it for fatigue. So we've got an idea of the what's happening from a static loading point of view. Now we want to know what would happen when we start cycling the load. So let's just edit this type of analysis again. And we'll switch to a different analysis type. And you can see here, like what I was talking about in the PowerPoint, all the different types of analysis we can work with. So we've got all your typical linear, nonlinear, static. And down the bottom here, we've got two different types of fatigue, vibration fatigue and multi-axial fatigue. So we're going to just create a, an analysis type here for fatigue multi-axial, and we'll say OK. And again, as we work down our tree here on the left-hand side, what we'll do is we'll see that our analysis type has changed to multi-axial fatigue. We'll work our way down, and we can see that our aluminium 1060 annealed rod, we need to edit this, this. And we need to tell us what its fatigue parameters or settings are. So what we've got here is I, or stress cycle fatigue and strain cycle fatigue. So on our stress like our stress stress life fatigue, it's more suited for high cycle fatigue, whereas strain life fatigue is more suitable for low cycle fatigue. And what we'll do is we'll we'll work with stress life fatigue for this particular example. And what we're doing is if you're not sure what these um, abbreviations are. You can see that we hover over that gives us a tooltip. This is the curve slope. SU is the stress at which high cycle fatigue begins, and we'll call that 200. The number of cycles where high cycle fatigue will begin is uh, after a thousand. We've got options then again for our surface finish. So if we want to put in the surface finish to reduce the the fatigue life of the part, we can do that. BE is the slope of the curve after the endurance limit. And the endurance limit will punch in here as well as 75. So we can click on Show Plot. It will give us a view of the data we put in. It looks OK. And OK. OK, so we've got fatigue on again. Um, let's click OK for that. Next step down is to go to our fatigue setup. setup excuse me, And we can tell NASTRAN NCAD which stress to use in its fatigue calculation. There are some more settings here that can be used for the event history or the time history of its fatigue life. We'll leave these blank for the time being. Moving down our tree again, let's give a look at our loads. And we need to tell us how these loads vary, how they're going to be cycled. Basically, is it fully reversed? Is it sawtooth? And so on. And what I've done to set up this analysis was just create a little table. 
So table data. And table data lives in the model parameter down here. And just to show you the type of loading that I want, it's a dimensionless user defined. So it's going to load up and unload over one second, or every cycle, I should say. So we're happy with it. Load 1 is going to be cycled in that fashion. Let's check load 2. And again, we'll assign it to table 1. And the way these tables were defined, they're down in the model node here. And I've got some tables defined here. And that means that as I put in various subcases, I can pick and choose what loads and constraints I want. So I can do various load scenarios or load cases in one analysis type, which is quite quite useful. OK, so we've got our fatigue set up. We've told our loads what way to cycle. Let's give it a run and see what type of results we'll be looking at. And again, it, it, it runs quite quick. The majority of the time for the fatigue analysis is going and running the static steady state load. And it should only take a couple of seconds to run the fatigue analysis. So when we have our fatigue analysis completed, we can give it a bit of life contour. And we'd edit that. We'll just switch the contours such that um, red is highlighting the areas where our fatigue life is lowest. So we can see that in certain areas of the model, we've got failure at quite low cycles. And that allows us to zone in on the model. So for example, if this part was seeing cracks in service, we, we, we could anticipate that it's in this area of the model or this area. And we could in turn then start strengthening up those two areas so that they can last longer due to cycle load. So it's excellent capabilities within Autodesk Nastran and NCAD. And what are nice features as well is we can specify the minimum and max here that we want to look at. We can also animate. And that will show us how the loads or the stresses are going into the model or the parts that are breaking or going to break. So that's quite nice as well. And we can click OK. So that's the just to show you the extra capabilities that if you were using Inventor Professional, um, that you can use. And you can see we've got a, a really fine mesh as well, nice uniform mesh being used. OK, so the next part of the demonstration that I wanted to show was, I hope that's given kind of people a feel for what Autodesk Nastran is and how you work in it. And it's nice workflow capability. What, what's, I guess, one of the real benefits is that if we go back to our, just save that before we move on. If we go back to our 3D model, we can see how this part is made. And we can say, right, maybe if we change this to 14 mil. And I don't need to open vault at this stage. We can finish the sketch. Increase the thickness of our part. And you can see my extrusions are falling apart a little there. So what I'll do is undo. And perhaps just undo that again. But you can kind of get the idea that if I do change, let's change something that's a bit more amenable to being changed. OK. So let's give it one last go at this one. And let's change it to, let's see what dimension we can change that won't cause the model to fall apart. OK. We can change the dimension in our model. Then go back to Nastran NCAD. We can update all the meshes. And we can start rerunning our analysis as we like. So you have that true associativity between your CAD data and your FE data, which is, is going to increase your efficiency. It means you can jump in and out of modeling. You can pick your strength as you design your parts, which is very, very efficient, as I said. So let's close that down, and let's open up another part that I wanted to show everyone today. So the next part I wanted to show people to get a feel again what Autodesk Nastran can do is an assembly analysis. Okay, And the assembly analysis here involves two parts. And you can see these bolts also. So it's a bolted connection we want to model. And what I'm going to do is let's 
give a look at NAS, Autodesk Maestron tab again, and let's load in our results just to spare some time. Okay, and we'll switch our model tree. And let's give a look at our, just to show you the, the end results as such. So let's edit this. And let's change it to displacement and turn on our deformed options and display that. So the way the model is set up, there's an axial load being pulled on the horizontal beam here. And we've got fixed constraints at either end of the vertical eye beam. And you can see there that we're magnifying the deformation that's happening here. Just to show you that what's holding this beam in place is the bolted connections. And it's not actually a bonded contact. So you can also notice that the bolts aren't actually in the model. So when we go back, let's cancel out of that. And say OK. And what I'll do is I'll just turn off the the loads and the meshes at the moment, just so we can focus in on these connectors. So the way these were modeled in, let's give a look at our connectors over here on the left-hand side, and let's delete one. So let's delete connector three, remove. So the way these were put in, let's go new again. And the types of connectors we can work with are rods, cables, springs, rigid bodies, and bolts. So this makes it very quick and easy to model in a bolted connection. So I can tell Autodesk Maestron that, yeah, the outside diameter of my bolt is going to be here. And the outside diameter of the nut is going to be there. Oops, I've picked the wrong edges. So I can just delete all and delete all here. Let's do that again. So it's the same size as what we see below. We can also add in things like washer heights. So this is in inches. Because my document is in inches here. So this is from the tutorials that come with Autodesk and Astra and NCAT. So we can see that we can model in our bolted connections and so on without actually having to model the geometry. What it does is it puts in a beam element inside our model and holds it together the way a bolted connection would. And I just mentioned the tutorials that come with, whoops, wrong window to drag across. Um, the tutorials that come with Autodesk and Alstrand. So they're all up, available up here. And you get access to 35 different examples. And it goes through each and every type of example you can work with in Autodesk and Alstrand and CAD. And they're very detailed. And it gets you up and running quite quickly. OK. so. That's assembly analysis. The second thing I wanted to look at in this particular analysis was we saw that we had contact modeled between these two parts. So the way we can model contact, again, let's give a look at our results just to show contour undeformed. OK. So because we've got two parts, we have to establish contact between the two parts. And the way we, the way I'd done that to set this model up was going into surface contacts down here on the left-hand side of the screen. And the different types of surface contacts we can put in are general, welded, slide, rough, offset, weld. Welded would be the similar or the same as bonded contact in other FEA packages. Excuse me. So. We can put in the coefficient of friction in here as well, which is quite nice. So these are capabilities that we wouldn't have had in Inventor Professionals FEA package. So if you're moving up from that, it gives you more accurate ways to model what's actually happening. So the next kind of area I wanted to, again, hopefully give everyone a good feel for what Autodesk Nastran can do is Let's give a look at, we've looked at fatigue. Let's give a look at our nonlinear capabilities. So our nonlinear capabilities, and then we'll, we'll look at another failure mode, which is buckling as well. So with our nonlinear capabilities, as I mentioned earlier on, we've got uh, hyperelastic material models. 
So that allows us to analyze things like plastics. And this is another example from the tutorials that come with Autodesk Nasdran in CAD. And what we've got set up here, let's just turn on our mesh again to show you our load and our mesh model. So this is simulating a, a plate coming down on top of an O-ring. And I've set up a, or the tutorial describes how to set up a cylindrical coordinate system. So if you can imagine this is a circular flange coming down on a plate, and we've got a seal inside in a groove on the lower plate. We want to model what's happening with the seal here and how it's actually compressed down. So if we give a look at the way the model has been set up, Let's go to our Autodesk Nastron model tree. And what we've done is we've, we've modeled it up at 25% load, 50% load, 75% load, and 100% load. And this is what I mentioned earlier on. We can do different subcases. And each subcase we can set up separately, or we can copy and paste or drag different constraints into each subcase. So we don't have to do it all manually. It's quite easy to set up. So again, to spare ourselves time, instead of actually running the results, let's load in the results. And let's give a look at our results at the different stages of compression. But just before we do that, actually, just to show you the way that this model has been set up again, if we look at our material property for rubber, let's just edit it, you can see that we've change the type instead of being isotropic isotropic like we saw in the first analysis we've made it hyper elastic and we've also used the subtype which was Mooney Ruben. You've got other subtype models to work with as well depending on the types of plastic you're going to analyze. So let's give a look at our results. Um, and maybe let's look at our displacement. And we can pick as 25% loaded, perhaps. Display that. And the, the model will just update in a second. You can see that it's compressing down slightly. When we move to fully down, 100% load. And the graphics will just update. And we'll display that. Oops. So for our deformed options, let's just even show the actual and display that. We'll see what happens to the seal as the the top plate moves down. And because it's going through large deformation, you can see it takes a little bit longer to update. But it's very accurate modeled what's actually happening to that plastic seal. And then we can define if our seal is sufficient, if it's fitting in, what sort of stress is it seeing, and so on. So we've got really good capabilities with our nonlinear and our ability to model different types of materials like plastics and steels. Okay, the again the next area just to kind of give you I guess a fly through of the different types of analysis that we can work with and the different ideas that you can potentially get from working with Autodesk NAS Training CAD. We can look at our last analysis type, which is buckling. Oh. I don't know, actually, we don't have that to, to look at and set up. So the type of buckling, oh, we can actually, if we go back to our tutorial files instead. So let's just give a look, if we can give a look at tutorial 14. Just to demonstrate the difference, again, this will, this will show you a surface model. So this model was modeled in Inventor as a surface. And we can see that we've got tetra, or sorry, quadrilateral elements available to us in shell format. And we've got a pressure load acting down on top. So we can see we've got an initial load put on top here, which is a pressure load normal to the surface, negative 1 psi got the outer face is fixed, and we want to run a buckling analysis. You can see that our analysis type, again, is linear buckling. So this is doing an iron value analysis. And again, 
what we'll do is to spare time rather than running the analysis, we'll just load in the results. And we'll then give a look at what's happening. So with our results options, we can give a look here at our different buckling modes. So we can see that because we've only put in a negative one PSI, it means that what will cause this surface to buckle is 2.03 PSI. Is it's mode one when it sees that, and let's check out the contours on that. And we can see the the types of deformation that's happening here, and the types of results. So again, we can look at our different failure modes, our buckling modes, and display again. And it shows us how the part will actually buckle in from a linear buckling analysis point of view. So I know that's the first part of this webcast we looked at the basic setup and the next kind of three or four analyses we looked at were more overviews but hopefully it's given you a, a feeling for what Autodesk Nasdrand can do with capabilities and if you want to find out more information about Autodesk Nasdrand in CAD what you can do is you can go to the Autodesk Sim 360 channel on YouTube so this is an excellent channel, it gives you lots of information and different types of analysis you can work with. And you can see here we've got an introduction to Autodesk Nasdran InCAD, which shows an assembly analysis. We've got a thermal analysis down here, and a bolted connection analysis, and another nonlinear analysis. So it's an excellent resource, I'd highly recommend you check it out. And of course our own website, a2ktechnologies.com.au. We've got access to, or once you log on here, you've got access to white papers, you've got access to previous webinars. So this web webinar will be posted up here in time as well, probably next week. Um, so if your colleagues or you want to look at it again and cover back some of the stuff that Autodesk Nasdaq and NCAD can do, then you'll be able to look back on it quite easily. Okay, so that's pretty much my topic list or my run sheet that I wanted to go through for today. If there's any questions or answers, I'll just give a, people a, a second to type in. And I can see that one question has come in and it's in relation to can you limit the display of elements that are above maximum allowable stresses. So we can definitely do that. So let's just cancel out of that for a second. And let's go back to our, let's go back to one of these models, perhaps this one here, because we kind of know what the stresses were like. Okay, so let's um, load up our results there again. Oh. Let's see if we've got our results. Okay, let's just switch that analysis, maybe I didn't save it correctly. So we can switch that back to linear static. Uh, let's, let's, let's not do that. Let's just see if we can load it in, see when these results were modified. So I'd imagine it's this one here, because I didn't actually save the name accurately. So it's slightly different, but let's just see if our results can be displayed. So let's go to our solid von Mises and display. Okay, that's not looking really accurate, so what I'll do is I'll change the analysis type and perhaps I, I've saved over results as I was working through the webcast. So you can name your analysis types a bit um, more accurately than what I was doing here. And that in turn would allow you to reload the results to what you want to load. So let's just run it as a linear static again, load one, constraints, physical property, Let's edit that and change it back. Okay, we'll leave it as aluminium for the time being, just to show, to answer the question that came in. Oops. Let's run that. And hopefully it doesn't take too long. Again, a couple of seconds. So you, you can save your results out, and you can save the results with different names, and that'll allow you to reload your results in accurately each time. So the issue there was that I, um, I saved my results without naming them accurately and I couldn't find where my results are, which results file I wanted to load in. So let's display our stress results. Let's use our von Mises. 
And we, we've got an option here. You can see specify min max. So we can see the max is 297. Let's say our allowable stress was 200 MPA. So we can tell NASTRAN in CAD, let's show our minimum 200 and our maximum 294 and display that. And we can really zone in on the area. So maybe let's change our maximum to maybe 100 just to display it a little bit more accurately, or visual display. So you can quite quickly see which elements are showing stresses above your allowable stress. And this is useful in finite element analysis where you want where you're experiencing localized yielding. So let's say there's parts of the model that are yielding slightly, but it's not going to cause failure. So in that scenario, you really should be using a nonlinear analysis. And with this kind of capabilities here, you can really zone in and define if it's localized yielding. Because in lots of cases, localized yielding occurs, but it doesn't actually cause the part to fail. So it's, it's quite acceptable in certain designs. OK, so I hope that answers that question. And another question that's come in as well is in relation to the licensing. So at the moment, the licensing is network only, as far as I'm aware. Um, it does allow you that flexibility with a network license in that you can have several designs using the one license. But I guess if you're just one person, then you have to switch up to a network license. But you, your best bet is to contact the sales guys here and find out what the pricing is. And I, I think you'll be impressed by what you'll hear back. And it's worth checking that out. OK, so let's allow another second or two for questions and answers to come in. And it appears that it's relatively quiet. So what we're going to do is finish it up here. Um, thanks very much for your time. I appreciate everyone taking time out of their busy day to review this webcast. And as I said, if you want to look back on us, it will be up in our webinar vault. So OK, guys, I look forward to the next webcast. And again, thank you very much for your time. Bye now.